In this lesson, we're gonna look at the functionality of the various Azure management solutions. If we go ahead and look at those skills that are being assessed, we're now diving into the availability of the Describe Azure management tools, and then looking at the various components. In this particular lesson, the Azure Portal, Azure PowerShell, CLI, Cloud Shell, Azure Mobile App, but then we'll look at things like Azure Advisor, ARM Templates, Azure Monitor, and Azure Service Health. So we're gonna dive into those interactions. Now, as you may remember, we think about, well, we have Azure. And Azure has all these different pieces of functionality. But any management interaction is always going through that Azure Resource Manager. It doesn't matter which tool we're using. But as a user, I can think about, well, I'm, I'm sitting at my machine and there are different avenues open to me on how I perform that management. So the most obvious one is the portal. And just like everything else, all of these, as we're gonna see, are going via that Azure Resource Manager. Now the portal is super intuitive. I can look around, I can understand what my options are. It's good for viewing and maybe investigating. If we jump over and look, what we'll actually see is, hey, from this portal, I can see all the different services. I could go and look at some resource I had. I can see information about it. I get monitoring information about it. I can see some nice metrics. I can get recommendations, I could dive in, I could tweak certain things. So it's really nice for that looking, for that maybe investigation. However, if I actually try to create something, well, it's super slow. It's gonna take me a really long time to fill in all of these values and pick all of the right options that might be available. So it's gonna be very hard to be consistent between the creation of multiple instances, maybe over different applications, maybe over different environments. So one of the negatives we're gonna really see about this portal is consistency and also speed, scale. It just doesn't do those things. It's not designed for doing things on mass. I can't document really exactly what I did and make it easy to use for someone else. Click the third option down, it would take forever. And I can't easily compare well, what's deployed with what I wanted to do. So it's nice for that intuitive viewing of what we have, but it's really not good for even kind of management or provisioning of resources. Now the next option we have is there is a mobile application. So this is, hey, I've got my little mobile device. This could be iOS, it could be Android. And this is really good for maybe just looking at, hey, basic alerts that may be coming over. Maybe it's a very basic action. I want to perform. But typically I'm on that smaller form factor. I'm definitely not gonna be creating things from these. But hey, I, I can do some basic type of interaction from that mobile application. I could start and stop something. So these are a graphical experiences that we have available. Now the next group of experiences we have is more around scripting. And there are two. I can think about there is an AZ PowerShell module. So PowerShell is cross-platform. So although it started with Windows, I can have it on Linux. I can have it on Mac OX. So yes, Windows. Yes, Linux. Yes, Mac OS. So both PowerShell and the module is available on there. So this is really useful from a scripting. I wanna write something, perform some actions. So this is where we're gonna focus on, hey, I want to, this is imperative. I'm telling it how to do something. So this would be a good solution. I wanna perform some automation. 
And I already know PowerShell. So I'm already a PowerShell person. My company has PowerShell as direction. Yeah, I'm gonna use this. If we jump over super quickly to a terminal, this is a PowerShell terminal. And it's all about, hey, I can do things like get AZVM. And I could format that as a table. So it's using the familiar PowerShell context of verb, noun, least cognitive distance between the command I wanna run. I could use these in my PowerShell script. This is super useful. I could stop it, start it. All those kind of management interactions are great using that PowerShell module. Now, just like we have that, there's also the Azure CLI. And once again, this is cross-platform. So exactly those same options I could use, Windows, Linux, Mac OS. Once again, all of these same things apply. So all of these properties apply here. They basically have the same set of capabilities. So if that is graphical, this is all about kind of a, a command line interface and I want to script something. I think, hey, I want to automate something. And this is more historically around, hey, I'm used to bash. I'm using bash shell scripting. That's the knowledge I have. I'll probably use the AZ CLI over the PowerShell module. But their capabilities are really the same. And so if I jump over once again, now I could absolutely run the AZ CLI from here, but just to kind of demo, now I'm in a command prompt. I could do something like, hey, AZ VM list output table. So I'm doing exactly the same thing, but I'm using the AZ CLI. So I can see, hey, I, yep, I have that option available to me. Now, one of the key things we actually have in the portal, close that down, is if I go back to the portal for a second, we have this cloud shell. So we have this icon here. And interestingly, I can also access this from the mobile application. So if I open this, it's gonna bring me up a shell. Now I can pick of Bash or PowerShell. So here I'm in Bash, well I can do the AZ VM list output table. I can use the AZ CLI. Or I could jump over to the PowerShell and use the PowerShell module. So I have those different options available to me. So a key point here is, hey, we have this AZ PowerShell, we have this, but from these experiences, both of these, I can access these, both of them using Cloud Shell. So they can actually be made available to me. So just remember though, no matter which one we use, all of these different options, if it's the portal, if it's the mobile app, if it's the PowerShell module, if it's the CLI, it doesn't make any difference. They're all going through that same Azure Resource Manager. So all of those same things that have been forced, like authorization, like policies, will apply no matter which one I use. So hey, I have some scripting need, and I'm used to PowerShell in my company, hey, I'll use the AZ PowerShell module. I have a scripting need, but we're more bash based, hey, I'll use AZ CLI. Hey, I wanna quickly look around on my mobile device, hey, I can use the mobile app. I wanna get this intuitive experience to see what's maybe investigate something, I can use the Azure portal. But you'll notice none of these, I'm particularly stressing to create resources and we'll get to ARM templates, which is the preferred option, because these are all imperative based. So right now, none of these are the right option for the best practice way to actually provision resources.